All right, everybody, I'm Logan Alec, I'm a CPA, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an actual review of The Motley Fool. I'm gonna tell you how The Motley Stool stock picks have performed recently. I'm gonna give you the real pros and cons of The Motley Fool. There's real talk in this video. I actually purchased Motley Fool's flagship program, The Motley Fool Stock Advisor subscription, specifically so I can review it for you. Yes, this is an actual review. And I say this is an actual review because unfortunately, right now when you search Motley Fool review on YouTube, what you'll see more often than not is YouTubers basically just shilling for The Motley Fool so they can collect their affiliate commission, okay? Uh, in fact, one of the comments on one of the more popular Motley Fool review videos basically says as much. But in this video, I'm actually gonna give an honest review of The Motley Fool stock picking service, real talk, right? So I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button down there, which is the big old thumbs up down below this video because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm so that people can actually know the real pros and cons of the Motley Fool and not just watch a sales pitch when they're trying to do their research on this service on YouTube. All right, before I get into the pros and cons of The Motley Fool and my personal experience with The Motley Fool, let's give a little background here and history. So Motley Fool was founded in 1993 by brothers David and Tom Gardner. What's with the name? Why did they call themselves The Motley Fool? It's because in Elizabethan dramas, such as those written by William Shakespeare, there is often a character who was the fool or the court jester. And in these dramas, the fool, though he played the part of a ridiculous person, he was often the wisest character in the play. He could actually speak his mind. Because he plays the role of a joker, uh, he can, in a joking fashion, speak truth about the king right, or any other topic in his jesty fashion, truth that if others said it would end up with them losing their head, right? So in Elizabethan dramas, it's often the fool, the court jester, uh, who serves as the primary truth teller for the audience. For example, in King Lear, uh, the unnamed fool is always calling out King Lear uh, on his dumb decisions. He's the truth teller. He's, he's an amusing truth teller, right? So that's the inspiration for the Motley Fool's name. The Motley Fool uh, claims to educate and amuse and enrich individuals in the search of truth. And the main way they do this is by sharing stock picks, believe it or not, right? If you go to fool.com, you'll see all the recent blog posts and content basically full of stock picks. For example, here's an article, forget Alibaba, these three Chinese tech stocks are better buys. So how all the free content works is there's like an elementary net level analysis at the bottom, and then at the bottom they pitch you on a freebie in an attempt to get you to give them your email address. And of course, after you give them your email address, you get on their mailing list so they can put you in an email sales funnel for the Motley Fool Stock Advisor, which like I said, is their flagship stock picking program. So that's the Motley Fool's basic business model. The question is, of course, how are their picks? How are their actual stock picks? Are they good or are they bad? Well, on their website, they claim that their stock picks have beaten the S&P 500 by leaps and bounds, that their stock advisor service is up 500 plus percent, uh, while the raggedy old S&P 500 is up only 100% since I started tracking this thing, apparently. Problem is, though, it's pretty much impossible to verify this one way or the other. Other than a tiny graph here, I don't see any real proof of this claim, so I don't really put much stock in this pun intended. But the proof or lack of proof is in the pudding. So I decided to purchase myself a subscription to Motley Fool Stock Advisor so I could test it out, tell you what I think about it. That's what I'm going to do right now. So what do you get with the Motley Fool Stock Advisor? Well, the main thing you get is stock picks. No surprise there. They have their stocks to buy today. This is about 9, 10, 11 or so stocks that the Motley Fool says you should buy today. I'm not going to show them here because this is, of course, the Motley Fool's proprietary information. I will, however, later in this video, tell you how they performed without revealing their identities. Now, before we get into the stock picks themselves and their performance, before I get into those numbers for you, I just wanna talk about the mentality that in my opinion, in my opinion, The Motley Fool tends to promote. Because more than anything, this is what I kind of have beef with, okay? My opinion is The Motley Fool and any stock picker, frankly, whether it's CNBC or Jim Cramer or any of these other financial rackets, in my opinion, the mentality to promote is one of addiction. And in this case, stock market addiction. Now. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not using the word medical in a clinical or professional sense. By stock market addiction, I just mean, hey, when I say that, I'm talking about somebody who's addicted to the stock market in the sense that they're checking the stock market more than they should, right? And they're always looking for the next stock pick that's gonna make them rich. And their mood and their day is affected by how their stocks perform today because they're constantly checking up on them. That's a miserable way to live in my opinion. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. The Motley Fool would never say that's what you should be doing. The Motley Fool says that their investment philosophy prioritizes buying and holding quality stocks for long periods of time. If you look on their investing philosophy page, it's all very sound, right? Invest for the long term, hold for the long term, don't worry about short term fluctuations, yada, 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 all that good stuff. 
But in my opinion, and again, this is just my opinion, when The Motley Fool sends me, after, mind you, I've already purchased their flagship service, The Motley Fool Stock Advisor, when The Motley Fool sends me daily emails talking about new stock picks constantly, their number one stock for the Sunbelt migration trend, my free real estate trailblazer stock pick, a relatively unknown stock that was 315x growth potential, stocks to invest in before the market opens, the next Amazon, blah, 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 more stock picks than I know what to do with. This seems to me, and feel free to disagree, but it really seems to me that they're promoting this next big thing, next hot stock investing mentality. That's just my opinion, okay? Now let's talk about the numbers, how the Motley Fool Stock Advisor picks have performed in the approximately three months uh, since I've been a subscriber. I'm going to take the performance of these picks, compare them to one of my favorite index fund ETFs, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF, ticker symbol VTI, which seeks to track the performance of the U.S. stock market as a whole. So in the analysis I'm going to share with you shortly, um, I'm going to show you how these Motley Fool stock picks that I received performed versus how your money would have grown if you had just put the same amount uh, purchased on the same days uh, that you made Motley Fool purchase it in, but instead of buying the Motley Fool stock picks, you put them in the VTI. And look, I want to emphasize that this is just three months worth of performance here to compare, right? And when you're investing, you invest for the long term, not just three months. I believe that that's the Motley Fool's philosophy. So one criticism of the analysis I'm going to share with you here, and it is a valid criticism, is that the Motley Fool make stock picks for the next X number of years, years and years into the future. And maybe it's not fair to just compare three months worth of performance to an index fund. But my counter to that is that, A, this is still data. No, it's not long-term data, but it's still data, right? And we might be able to make conclusions from it. And B, this is the best I have since I've only been a Motley Fool subscriber for three months. So without further ado, here's the data. Obviously, some columns are hidden here because I, I'm not going to share with you the Motley Fool's proprietary stock pick information. I'm not going to show you the sticker uh, ticker symbols of the stock picks. I'm not going to show you the share price of the stocks or any of that. All that information is hidden in columns A, D, F, and G, which you cannot see here. But basically what I did is I assumed that in this hypothetical example, I bought a thousand I bought $1,000 worth of each Motley Fool stock pick the day I was informed of that pick. By the way, to keep things consistent here, uh, between one stock and another, all prices I used were based on the closing price of the stock for the day purchase. And then I calculated what the value of that investment would be uh, now, as, as of the date of recording, including dividends, because dividends reduce the price of the stock, right? But I want to capture the dividends as well. So I'm looking at the total return, and I calculated what the value of that investment would be, including dividends, if paid, or actually if declared, uh, would be on June 11th, which is when I ran these numbers. So you can see that for stock one, for example, in this example, I would have invested $1,000 on March 18th, and on June 11th, the value of that investment would have been $1,116. Okay, so I ran these numbers for all the stock picks that Motley Fool sent me uh, every Thursday through the Stock Advisor. It's on Thursdays that they announce stock picks through the Standard Stock Advisor program. Uh, one week instead of that, they sent me a list of what they called starter stocks. Uh, so that's included in here as well. Anyway, I basically tracked these stocks. And basically, if I had invested $1,000 into all these stocks on the day I got that stock's pick, right, if I did that, then I would have invested in 34 stocks, right? So my basis would be $34,000, and the value of the, all these stocks in the aggregate on June 11th would be would have been $34,305.47, so an increase of $305.47. So at least they went up in value in the aggregate, right? Now, what if I had simply invested the same amount of money on the same days into VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF, how much would I have? So on March 18th, in the first example, I would have purchased 11 Motley Fool stocks, putting $1,000 into each one. So in the ETF scenario here, I, I assume that I purchased $11,000 worth of VTI at closing on March 18th. So if I would have done this, I would have invested the same $34,000 into the market during this three month period. And if I did that, how much would I have had on June 11th, the day I ran these numbers? I would have had $35,702.63, an increase of $1,702.63. Compare that to the Motley Fool picks. Almost $1,400 more by just investing in the index fund. So what am I saying? Am I saying that the Motley Fool stock picks are always bad sticks, uh, bad picks, that they're dogs? No, not necessarily. Again, this is only three months worth of data. But with the limited data I have, I'm not entirely convinced that I should use Motley Fool to inform my investing. For the time being, I'm sticking to index funds, folks. 
Uh, as you know, as I've said on this channel, I do play with individual stocks and cryptocurrencies and things like that with 5 to 10% of my portfolio, but the majority of it is in index funds. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of The Motley Fool, starting with the pros. Pro number one, while in my opinion, its marketing doesn't always reflect this, I do believe that The Motley Fool's stated investing principles are sound, right? We're talking investing for the long term, not freaking out when the market goes down, staying the course, all that good stuff. So I would say pro number one is sound overall investment philosophy. Pro number two, The Motley Fool does do a decent job of making basic investing concepts easy to understand and oriented toward the layman. That said, and this is kind of a segue into the cons here, in my opinion, The Motley Fool can sometimes be a little too simplistic. Um, so con number one, like I said, this is just my opinion, but con number one, sometimes I found the analysis I would get with the stock picks and Motley Fool Stock Advisor to be pretty light. I can't show you a specific example because that would be showing you the Motley Fool's proprietary information, but oftentimes the commentary on a particular stock, when the Motley Fool releases a new pick, a new best buy, the analysis is just basically something along the lines of, okay, here's the stock, here's what the business does, here's a few sentences on its unique position in the market, here's a few numbers we picked from the latest financials uh, you know, that the company released, and here's the basic chart and stock quote information you can get from anywhere, right? And that's, that's basically it. Not a lot of in-depth uh, analysis or anything like that. So in my opinion, the analysis can be a little bit light. Con number two, in my opinion, the stock advisor picks are really heavy in tech. So naturally with tech, oftentimes you have some real winners, but also some real dogs as well, whose valuations uh, were just unjustifiably sky high, right? Resulting in the stock underperforming. So if you do base at least part of your portfolio on the Motley Fool stock advisor stock picks, be prepared to deal with volatility. Con number three, the constant upselling. Every day or almost every day, I get an email from The Motley Fool trying to get me to purchase some additional service or subscription so I can get even more stock picks. Look, I know this is their business, but like I said earlier in this review, kind of rubs me the wrong way. That's not how I want to invest, constantly chasing the next great stock pick. Con number four, at least in my experience, which is limited as I said, is that The Motley Fool stock picks, they didn't beat the market, at least in my little, uh, in my little scenario here. All right, folks, that is my honest Motley Fool review. If you're interested in the Motley Fool, checking them out, even after watching my criticism in this review, I'd appreciate it if you did that through my Motley Fool affiliate link below. If you're so kind as to use my link, the channel will receive a small commission and no additional cost to you. Uh, be sure to check out my Investing for Beginners video, link to that one right over here, as well as my video showing you the many brokerages right now where you can get free shares of stock. Link to that video is right down here. I'll see you over in those videos. Happy investing, everybody. Bye-bye.